Hi, I'm Bob in Osterhout. I want to talk to you about anxiety and panic attacks. Uh, anxiety is when our body uh, uh, is more charged up than the situation calls for. Uh, there's tension building up, muscles are working against themselves. Uh, sometimes we get the shakes, we might break out into a sweat. Uh, our mind uh, is hard to focus and concentrate and jumps all over the place. Uh, and panic attacks are a severe form of anxiety. And uh, from my experience, I would say that panic attacks are probably the most frightening experience that anyone can, can, can have, including trauma. And I've worked a lot with people in uh, post-traumatic stress, uh, even people who've been in, in uh, severe, uh, severely traumatic situations in war and, and uh, even have been tortured. Uh, but I don't know that anything is more frightening than a panic attack because it feels like we have no control. And even when someone is being tortured, they can make choices, and they have they have very limited control. And of course, it's very uncomfortable. But a panic attack, it feels like you have no choice. It feels like your body is is running away from you and, and out of control. And the more you try to control it, uh, the more frightening it becomes. Uh, there's an interesting thing about panic attacks that I've noticed, and I've been treating them now uh, since uh, 1977. And that's what that I've never heard of anyone having serious uh, damage as a result of a panic attack. And you might think of the, all the stress that it puts on your heart, that it could cause a heart attack or a stroke or something like that. But in all that time, and any of the doctors I've worked with or talked to, they've never told me about anyone who's had uh, a serious medical problem as a result of a panic attack. So the first thing you can do if you ever have a panic attack is let it run its course. Uh, it, it basically is the body's uh, quite inefficient attempt to get rid of tension, uh, but it does run its course if you don't fight it. If you don't fight, if you fight it, uh, then you can keep it going for a long time and it becomes even more uncomfortable. So I'd like to explain to you how all that works. Okay. All of the symptoms of anxiety and the, the symptoms of a panic attack are just multiplying those and putting them all together. But each one of the symptoms of anxiety, if you go through the list from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, uh, every one can be explained by excessive muscle tension. Uh, basically, that's the muscles working when they're not moving. You have opposing muscle groups working against each other. Uh, so, for example, uh, one of the symptoms of, of anxiety is getting the shakes, okay? So watch what happens if I just increase tension on my fist, okay? See, it starts to shake. Now see what happens if I try to stop myself from shaking, if I try to control it. I'm going to try to stop it just for a moment here. Okay, it increases it. Okay, because by trying to control it, I actually use more tension, and it's the increase in tension that causes the symptom and the problem. Okay, so the solution is to stop the pattern of tension and allow your body to recover. Now, I've explained a lot of this in the video on diaphragmatic breathing, but I'm going to go over it just briefly again, and please refer to that uh, for the specifics on how to, to carry out the exercise. And also, the, the video on clearing your mind uh, will help with a lot of it, because the, the anxiety uh, creates a pattern of thinking that actually creates more anxiety. Uh, and, and then you get a self-escalating process, and it just continues to get worse. Okay, uh, But basically, the... the uh, the problem is the muscles working against themselves. And as I explained on the other video, it's like putting your foot on the gas while the car's in park. Everything is, is holding back while everything is moving forward. Um, and the idea is to reverse that process and allow your body to recover. And that really requires that you restore balance to your autonomic nervous system. Because basically, any time that someone is experiencing symptoms of severe anxiety or panic attacks, uh, there is an imbalance in the autonomic nervous system. And that part of the nervous system basically determines where the energy goes in your body. And it goes to one of two places. There's one part of the nervous system that activates all of your muscles. Anytime you're doing physical activity, that part of the nervous system needs to be activated. The opposing part of the nervous system does all the maintenance work of your body. It activates your internal organs. It digests your food, cleans out the blood, keeps you healthy over the long term. And those two parts of the nervous system work opposite each other. Okay, So what happens in anxiety is this part of the nervous system activating the muscles gets stuck on. And the mechanism for that are stress hormones. Stress hormones 
are released in the body when tension builds to a certain level. Basically, your body interprets that as a threat and gives you an extra boost of energy so you can deal with the threat physically, okay? which doesn't really apply to most of the situations we have to confront in day-to-day in -day life in modern culture. Okay. So this part of the nervous system gets stuck because the, the stress hormones increase the energy going to the muscles, which increases the tension, which increases the stress hormones, which increases the tension. And all the while, your maintenance system isn't getting enough energy, uh, so uh, you're not clearing out your blood, and it's just increasing and throwing you further out of balance. And what the diaphragmatic breathing does, and, and uh, you'll see the specifics of that on the video about that, is it stimulates the opposite nervous system, and that's through the movement of the diaphragm and there's a nerve that passes through the center of your body called the right vagus nerve. Diaphragm is down here. There's an opening in that diaphragm and that stimulates that nerve when you get the slow, easy, rhythmic movement of the diaphragm up and down as you breathe. Okay. Uh, basically, when you practice that, okay, you've activated this nervous system and the continuous stimulation of it allows your liver to clean out your blood. So you need to keep this activated for three to five minutes, uh, six to ten times a day. And that allows your liver to get the stress hormones out of your blood. And once you do that, the anxiety symptoms disappear. Um, and this is something that, that I have never seen fail in, in over 30 years of treating anxiety and panic disorders. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had a student uh, last year uh, who signed up for, uh, for my stress management course and read the book before the course. And I got an email before class even started. And uh, she had uh, a 20-year history of panic attacks and had been through all kinds of treatment. She'd been in therapy with a number of different therapists, had tried all kinds of different medications, still was having these disabling panic attacks. She did the diaphragmatic breathing for three weeks before class and had her last panic attack. She had never had, had another one throughout the semester and basically has put that behind her. And she, I never even met her, and she hadn't even started the class yet. All she did was read in the book about how the diaphragm restores balance, the movement of the diaphragm, I'm sorry, restores balance to your autonomic nervous system, and that's really uh, what's required to resolve anxiety and panic attacks. So I would encourage you to uh, give that a try. Uh, take your time, enjoy the process, use it as a learning experience, and good luck.